Coronavirus cases are on the rise. Donald Trump claims there's an AIDS vaccine. Celebrities issue an apology for ignoring racism. And police have once again murdered an African-American man. I'm Jenna Johnson, and this is COVID-19 News. Twenty-one states have seen an increase of coronavirus infections over the last two weeks after some states have allowed businesses to reopen. Despite this fact, the White House sent out an email claiming there isn't a coronavirus second wave. Some argue that Vice President Mike Pence is correct when he wrote that statement because in order to have a second wave, we'd have to be over the first wave, which according to the World Health Organization, the first wave hasn't even peaked yet. This week, celebrities decided to take responsibility. No, I don't take responsibility at all. Well, not that one. For their inactions against racism. I take responsibility. I take responsibility. I take responsibility. I take responsibility for every unchecked moment, for every time it was easier to ignore than to call it out for what it was. Every not so funny joke. Every unfair stereotype. I love how Aaron Paul went full on Jesse Pinkman, and how Justin Thoreau made more of a confession than anything else. Also, I love how he covered his bases there. Every not so funny joke. He'll still laugh at the funny ones, just not at the not so funny ones. I know they meant well, but posting your cathartic white savior audition reel online is probably not the best way to go about fighting systemic racism. I take responsibility is a phrase parents would rather hear from their teenagers when they know they did something wrong. You just want them to take responsibility. I take responsibility for every time I didn't clean up my room, for every time I slept all day. I take responsibility for not taking the garbage out. Shit! Ah, so I take responsibility for my language. Quaker Oats has announced that they are changing the name and logo of their Aunt Jemima syrup and pancake mix because in a statement they said they recognize Aunt Jemima's origins are based on racial stereotypes. And if anyone knows racial stereotypes, it is Justin Thoreau. Every unfair stereotype. Not to be outdone, parent company Mars is changing their rice brand name Uncle Ben's in order to end racial bias as well. These companies don't know what the new names will be, or when they will change them, but let's just hope they don't do what the celebrities did and try so hard that they just freaking bomb. Like, try to incorporate every ethnicity or minority group because we could end up with Uncle Jemima's syrup, or Tio Ben's rice, or Aunt Ben's gender-neutral, all-inclusive love grains. Donald Trump announced this week during a press conference that there's an AIDS vaccine. Spoiler alert, there isn't. And they've come up with uh, the AIDS vaccine. They've come up with, or the AIDS, and they, as you know, there's various things, and now various companies are involved. Saying things like that on national television as president is going to get people's hopes way up only to then crush them when they find out it's not true. That's cruel. That's like telling your kids that you got them a puppy, but when they actually go to pet it, they can't because it died of AIDS. That's like telling children at a very young age that in this country, every vote counts. But then the Electoral College steps in and says, yeah, but not in the presidential election. That's like telling someone with AIDS that there's an AIDS vaccine when there really isn't. And they've come up with uh, the AIDS vaccine. I know that last one's not an analogy because it's what actually happened. It actually happened. Uh, and in news that seems like it's straight out of 1865, several minorities, predominantly African-American men, have been found hanged in public places around the country. The FBI is now actively reviewing some of these cases after police investigations concluded that there was no foul play and these men likely committed suicide. Suicide? Having the police investigate the hanging deaths of black men is like having a toddler investigate who stole the cookie from the cookie jar. Amid growing pressure from continuing protests around the country, Donald Trump signed an executive order banning chokeholds unless the officer's life is at risk. I don't think officers know exactly when their life is at risk. Have a Why seat, please. Why would you please. think that you could taste me? I'm freaking picking up trash on my property. 
I need to confirm Which is it. Where I live. There's a sign. I'm not doing anything illegal, and you're not gonna f tase me, officer. Camera here. You have a dangerous object in your hand, and you're failing to put it down. I'm picking up trash. Put it down. You're, gonna you're shoot being me. detained. Your hand is on your weapon, and you're gonna shoot me. That's what you're gonna do, officer. If you use that weapon against me, weapon. then I'm, yes, that I'm is a consideration. You. I'm my All business. you have to do is comply I'm right now. Officer, you're gonna shoot me. Just have a seat, man. All I want to do is figure this out with you. Sit down. I don't have a weapon. That's a weapon. This is a bucket. No, that's a weapon. This right there. A clamper for picking up garbage, sir. Put it down. I'm telling you, I'm threatened it's not by it. A weapon. You're not threatened. I'm threatened. You have a gun that kills people. How am I supposed to kill someone? Sit like down, this? sir. They can't choke you, but they can still shoot you which is what happened this week at a Wendy's in Atlanta when now ex-police officer Garrett Rolfe fatally shot Rayshard Brooks. The police woke up Mr. Brooks in his car in a Wendy's drive through He failed a breathalyzer test, fought off two police officers, took an officer's taser and began to run, and was subsequently shot in the back while running away. If you're one of those people that say the cop's life was in danger, he had to shoot, or don't run away if you don't want to get shot, or don't point a weapon at a cop and you won't get killed. Let me Jen explain something to you. Officer Rolf never told Mr. Brooks that he was under arrest, which is a mandatory procedure. Right. Just take me home. I'm ready to go. So you had about one and a half drinks, but you don't remember what kind of drinks they were? No, sir. All right. I really don't, Mr. Rolf. All right. I think you've had too much to drink to be dry. Put your hands on your back for me. Here, put your hands on your back. That shooting was made to punish rather than out of fear. First, Georgia law allows a person to use deadly force only if he or she reasonably believes that such force is necessary to prevent injury to himself or herself or a third person. Second, the Atlanta Police Policy Manual says that an officer can use deadly force when he or she reasonably believes that the suspect possesses a deadly weapon or any object, device, or instrument which, when used offensively against a person, is likely to or actually does result in serious bodily injury and when he or she reasonably believes that the suspect poses an immediate threat of serious bodily injury to the officer or others. Third, it was a taser, which falls under the exact category of pepper spray and a baton. Furthermore, Atlanta Police Department policy dictates that an officer cannot fire a taser, much less a gun, when someone is running away. There is strong evidence that supports that there was a policing problem in this case. Records show a history of violence for Garrett Rolfe. A copy of his disciplinary history lists 12 incidents, including a written reprimand in 2017 for use of force involving a firearm. He was exonerated in nine out of the 12 incidents following internal reviews which begs the question, how many officers with past infractions are on the streets that we don't know of? Well, the answer is a shit ton. At least 85,000 law enforcement officers across the USA have been investigated or disciplined for misconduct over the past decade. Officers have beaten members of the public, planted evidence, and used their badges to harass women. They have lied, stolen, dealt drugs, driven drunk, and abused their spouses. These records are filed away, rarely seen by anyone outside of the departments. Police unions and politicians have worked to put protections in place to ensure some records are never seen by the public or they're even just destroyed. Given these facts, it can be argued that given the amount of police killings on African Americans in this country, Richard Brooks is a person who reasonably believed he would fall victim to death by police after tussling with them. He is within his rights under Georgia law to protect himself. The video shows the officer going for his gun before Rayshard Brooks points the taser at the officer, and the video also shows the taser going off, not hitting the officer, yet the officer fires his gun anyway. The only life that was ever in danger was Rayshard Brooks's life, not the officer. Brooks did not present any kind of threat whatsoever. The officer had many options that would not have resulted in death. Hence, the officer in question has been fired from the department and charged with felony murder. And the other officer, Devin Brosnan, has been charged with aggravated assault. And police chief Erica Shields has resigned due to the incident. You have just been gensplained. This week, Justin Thoreau will be taking responsibility for... Every not-so-funny joke. I'm Jenna Johnson. This is COVID-19 News. Thanks for watching.
Catch every episode by subscribing to our channel, and remember to like and share our videos to spread the love. And remember, wearing a mask out in public gets you a thousand points.